Greetings, this is Preacher Rick. One more day with you in the Word of God. And for around 10 minutes, as the Lord has led us down through this pandemic, and we come to you live. Now we've gone through the book of the all the books of the Bible and a lot of the patriarchs and different characters of the Bible. Today we'd like to look at Absalom. If you're not familiar with that name, he was one of the sons of the King David. Same David that killed the giant, Goliath. Uh, for those of you that are not real familiar with the scripture. But anyway, let me read a little hi history about him. And then, Lord be willing, we'll preach. Absalom, he was the third son of it, David. And that's a complicated story itself, uh, as you Bible readers know. Uh, and uh, he was a very handsome, uh, well-built young man uh, with a commanding presence. Uh, you know the type. Very eloquent and uh, had a persuasive presence about him. That's just the kind of man he was. He was uh, the kind that draws people in, and you know the type. Uh, he was also his father's favorite, and every dad has him, I suppose, uh, but became uh, he the center of a lot of drama and uh, conflict, to say the least, uh, and we'll read about it a little bit. Uh, well, his sister was violated by her half-brother, and when that happened, he was furious, and rightfully so. It should make any of us furious. And he was unp unpunished by the king. So his half brother, I mean his, yeah, his half brother, that violated his sister, uh, well, his their their dad, King David, didn't punish him for it. And Absalom was furious, and he took the law into his own hands and had him murdered. Uh, and that ruined everything. He then fled Jerusalem, returning three years later, coming face to face with his father another two years after that. And remember, it, the life of David, we could get into that, which will not take time to, but he was reaping what he sowed, and we do reap what we sow. And if you don't understand those terms, it means if you plant certain seeds, that's what will grow. Maybe they'll prosper, maybe they won't. But if you plant corn, you won't get beans. If you get anything, it'll be corn right that's reaping what you sowed you sow one and that's what grows and if you sow sin after you're saved you can expect sin to be around you and to torment you that's just the way it is and that's what happened to david anyway no, this is not about david david's grief at the affair was profound uh, he was very grieved but there was no true reconciliation. It never came back to peace with one another on the part of Absalom, uh, who now had designs on the throne itself. In other words, he was looking at his dad's throne. His eyes were fixed on the temporary things, like I've been preaching lately. And that's what so many people do. And that's what happens to children that go astray. And uh, people in church uh, that once uh, maybe were uh, very devoted to the cause. They get their eyes fixed on the temporary instead of the permanent, the total, uh, e totally eternal matters of life. And Absalom wanted to be king, basically. Uh, he saw his dad's throne. He knew he was a prince. And so he wanted it. Uh, so that unresolved conflict that they'd been having all along between the king and, and him as the heir, it turned into a revolt and uh, it took David by surprise big time and uh, he was forced to flee the city because of it remember that was his son trying to take over his kingdom it's a sad story isn't it children against their dads boy we're seeing a lot of that today aren't we leaving behind so he, he had to flee the city leaving behind spies and the chief of uh, uh, chief spy was I think you pronounce it Hushai. It's H-U-S-H-A-I, however you pronounce it, who persuaded Absalom to take the time to concentrate his force uh, before pursuing his father. In other words, slowed him down. And this gave David time to regroup. And uh, meanwhile, Ahithophel talked Absalom into line with the ten line with David's ten concubines his dad's concubines, which, of course, was a deliberate public insult against his dad, 
which made reconciliation or them ever coming to peace just out of the question. It couldn't happen now. Uh, so, uh, you know, you can go so far there's no turning back. As I've used a silly little simple expression, you cut somebody's arm off, you can't get it back on. It's gone. Well, in the broken wooded country of Ephraim, the decisive battle took place. David was victorious. When Absalom was running, fleeing through the trees, he had beautiful long hair. He was trapped by his long hair in the branches of an oak and killed by one of David's men. David grieved over him. It was his son, regardless of what he did. Any of us parents understand that. Well, as we look at this, we see that Absalom was totally out of control. And we're seeing our children out of control today in so many places in the earth. So many homes broken up, so many fathers against sons, sons against fathers, daughters against mothers, mothers against daughters. It just goes on and on and on. And you may question, well, why? Well, I think there's one simple answer to all of it, and that's sin. Uh, sin will take you so much farther than you want to go. It'll cost you so much more than you want to pay. Uh, it, it, is, uh, it is a decided, it is just so devastating to mankind, all the way from the Garden of Eden to now. And what we're seeing today is sin abound. It's abounding. Uh, you say, what's that mean? Well, it's sort of like the snowball. Uh, you take a snowball and you roll it a few times, it, it abounds, it gets bigger. And you roll it a few more times, it gets bigger. Finally, you can make the bottom of a snowman, right? We all did that as kids. Well, everyone that grew up around snow. And, uh, you know, you roll it. Finally, you can't roll it anymore. It gets too heavy. Unless you get two or three of your friends, then you can roll it again. It gets almost twice as big in one roll uh, because it has abounded so much. And that's called exponential growth. That's a, a scientific word. It's a big fancy word. But all it means is it grows fast. I mean, it's just so much different. It used to be. We used to that little snowball. When you rolled it, it didn't grow real fast. At least it didn't seem to. But boy, when it got big, then you rolled it. It really grew fast. That's exponential growth. And I've said many times, we've got more than exponential growth with sin it's like an avalanche today. We've got an avalanche of people, political uh, nonsense where people hate one another just because of their different opinions and uh, people just d trying to kill one another and hurting each other in the streets. And I don't think we've seen anything yet as far as that goes, but that's, that's just my thoughts. But I do know the Bible says that it wax worse and worse, and I believe that if there's ever a time that we need to realize that, that it's time to quit sinning and start living close to the foot of the cross as today. Anyway, all this went on with Absalom. And I want to read to you one verse of scripture here. And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul and the soul of Jonathan was knit that the soul of David... Oh. Uh, I got in, uh, I did the same thing I did before. I got in the wrong book. Right, right chapter, right name, wrong book. Give me a second here. You can tell I'm getting old. Okay. <laughs> you have to laugh at me. Anyway, I mean, I meant to go to 2 Samuel, the 18th chapter, and I went to 1 Samuel, the 18th chapter. And uh, we'll turn over there. I thought, well, I'm not reading the right verse here. There it is. And David numbered the people. Uh, that were with him and set captains over thousands and hundreds of people and David set forth a third part of the people under the hand of uh, uh, of Joab and anyway this is the chapter that you can read uh, of uh, Absalom's murder uh, murder and uh, uh, I, c I should take time to read but I've been talking too much I'm not going to read on but I want to get you in the right chapter this is where the murder take place. And that's what I'd like to talk about a little bit. He murdered his half-brother because of his brother's sin. And we're seeing a lot of that kind of hate today. Uh, the Bible teaches that God is love. 
And I, I realize, uh, as I preach today, I, I understand uh, that we have a lot uh, of times uh, that we should be angry, and even Christ himself was angry. But the Bible says, Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Uh, I believe it's all right to be angry, have righteous anger. Uh, but even when we have righteous anger in our in our soul, when we get so mad because of the things that are going on around us, uh, that doesn't give us a license to sin. Uh, he had no right in taking his brother's life, no more uh, than anyone else does. Murder is murder. Thou shalt not kill. And that's what God meant. And if you kill a man's testimony, if you kill a man's uh, uh, ministry, uh, the Bible says that that's the same as killing them. And I've seen I've seen that a lot of that in my life. I've seen people uh, destroy ministries. I've been shot pretty hard myself as a preacher uh, out of the saddles. The old saying is, uh, "By the grace of God, I was able to survive, but it, it did permanent damage." Uh, I believe there's a lot of people that could have gotten saved uh, had uh, the enemy not been uh, fired so hard. Uh, but when you kill, especially someone that professes Christianity, when you kill someone else's testimony, you're really stopping the Word of God dead in its tracks. And uh, God did not ordain for Absalom to be uh, the uh, king. He ordained for David to be the king. And uh, God is in control. And if we get uh, in our own control, you can bank on it. You can nail it to the wall. Uh, you can hide it uh, and, and in your thoughts and, and in your heart and know for sure that it's a fact uh, uh, that it will fall to the ground. If God is in it, it won't fall to the ground. If God isn't, it's not going to work. If you get out of God's will, you can bank, uh, as I said a moment ago, you can bank that you'll reap what you sowed, and Absalom did, and unfortunately, it cost him his life, uh, and now it cost him, uh, uh, here we are thousands of years later, reading about uh, uh, his uh, decision. How terrible, what, what a terrible decision it was, uh, uh, and how it tore down uh, all of the uh, good things of being a prince he could have had, and maybe someday would, who knows, have been, instead of, but God ordained. Let Solomon take the throne after David, didn't he? And that's another sermon. Uh, but, you know, Absalom was bent on his own ways. And there's a lot of people today bent on their own ways. Uh, and what a terrible decision he made in life that cost him his life. And it cost him the dismay that it brought to the whole kingdom of God. And when people do wrong, uh, you can bank on it, too that it's going to hurt a lot of people. But if you allow sin to come into your life, it's going to hurt a lot more than you. A lot of people go out and and uh, think that it just it's not, doesn't mean anything, that their life doesn't uh, interfere with other people's. Well, there's a movie, and I don't put a lot of stock in that kind of stuff, but everybody knows about it. It's a Christmas classic called It's a Wonderful Life, and, and I sure don't use it to preach the gospel, but but, but I will say this about it. It shows a picture of a man uh, that gets to see the world, how much his life touches the world. Uh, and basically, that's true with all of our lives. Uh, you, you make a big uh, splash. Uh, your life has a lot of uh, in, in influence on your children, your grandchildren, your moms, your dads, your grandparents, the people you work with, you never know how much influence your life has or how much it can destroy someone else's. So we need to realize that as we read about Absalom that it's time that we, I know I didn't do really a lot of preaching today, more of a lesson I suppose, but I did what God wanted me to. I studied it out this morning and it's one of those kind of messages that, uh, that's uh, very negative, but it'll bring positive results if you learn from it. Well, I know I've run over. I didn't mean to run over quite this long, uh, but it's the Word of God, and it will never return void. I hope you've learned from it, and if you've allowed yourself to do something you shouldn't, I hope you learn from it. May the Lord's blessing be upon you. May God's Word be hid in your heart. 
beloved share the gospel share it push the share button if you see fit the lord leads you that way get the word of god out there we love you all and are praying for you pray for me we'll be back on tomorrow lord willing and maybe preach a little more if it be god's will we look forward to being with you for it's in jesus name we come to you beloved god bless you love you all bye-bye